All right, so in our last video, we made our derived tags, right? So we talked about our derived tags. We actually added uh, some controls in here for the derived tag and showed how to use it, right, for severities. This one, we're going to do a count, all right? So we want to know, okay, so how many critical alarms do we have, right? We want to count that. We can, crit we can do that by critical alarm, or we can actually come in here and do this versus... Um, the uh, another derived tag and derived tags again um, in factory talk view at uh, site edition you know that's that's what we're really kind of expressing right we talked about before the derived tag element is the tag that you're talking is the data that's going being controlled and sent to the PLC the expression is what is going is going to be actually controlling that data right alright so with that said let's go ahead and add another one we're gonna do functions right we're gonna do another function. Let's do some like a count, right? You can do. I think another cool one is uh, that's widely popular uh, would be an account of like unacknowledged alarms. Or let's do. Um, let's just see. You got unacknowledged. You got shelves. You got. You can do a count of shelved alarms if you have. If you ever wanted to know, hey, how many how many shelved alarms do we have? Um, or you can do a count of normal unacknowledged count, right? And this again is going to come back and give you the count of unacknowledged alarms. Now that again is just going to allow you to go back and add that, um, and and to kind of understand the data behind things, right? So um, and you can say how many are in alarm, and you know as far as that goes, how many um, uh, you know are currently in alarm at that per, uh, uh, important time or whatever the case may be whatever your setup now we're going to do normal uh, unacknowledged count all right so that's going to put that in there we're going to come in and quickly add our tag just so we can easily come in here and do that um, and because again you need to add your tag first in your PLC so we're going to add our tag in here we're going to come up throw that in there as a dent that's perfectly fine just a double integer all right so we're going to come back into our derived tag status we're going to come up here and pick that now that being that we just added the tag we're going to refresh our tag database um, and we're doing that because we just added a tag it's brand new and we want to refresh our tag database to collect that data so it's right here we're going to pick it now again we're going to get our shortcut from up here right and then we're going to put it in here now first remember we have to put in our quotations and then we're going to put in our shortcut and then we're going to put in our um, wildcard and then end quotations all right so then we can accept that now we have that as a derived tag now if you did not do that properly it would not have have uh, accepted and you would have had a problem so now let's come in here um, and we've added a new derived tag so it's a very common that it, it, it very well could need to be restarted being that it is uh, we'll, so we'll stop it and then we'll restart it remember controlling the way your derived tags are again you can come up here to your um, your components in your HMI server and control them from your components so when your HMI server is starting and stopping you can you can actually come up here and control them from here or you can control them from a uh, a macro or something that you're running right you can do a macro and have that macro be run uh, from that or you can just do it from derived tags as we just did as a test now being that said let's actually put this to use let's come over here copy this go back into our routine right here and add this code in here so let's add another rung we're going to do uh, just just to compare or we can just do how many we used to have and let's just say we're trying to track the data and monitor how many we've had in the past all right so in that case we'll come in here and compare our actually let's just do a move uh, we'll do a quick move and we're gonna paste this tag in here and then we'll put uh, a new tag which will be we'll call this the count and then previous So we'll keep that as a dent. So we'll load that in there. Um, and then we'll have that load in there uh, if not equal to. So we can actually say, hey, if uh, we will only load this, only load this, 
uh, if we come in here and compare and let's just say not equal to if these two are not equal right and then that's the only way it's going to actually you know shift that data and you can have it actually trigger a bit if you wanted to and just have it do that but in this case we'll just say if those two are not equal then we want to load that data now how are we going to actually do this again we'll trigger an alarm just manually trigger an alarm we're not going to do anything special we'll come in here and trigger another alarm like we did let's trigger two of them let's trigger three of them let's trigger four of them let's trigger five of them all right so we'll come in here we'll verify in our system we did get all five of those alarms we did get all five in our alarms and events again this is the alarms and events summary so we're going to come in here and we're going to go back into our plc and we're going to go back to our data over here so we have our data here now the previous count did not count this is uh, unacknowledged uh, normal alarms so this is the normal alarms we don't I don't believe we have any normal alarms so we probably should have set that up for to be honest we probably should have set that up for alarms we probably should have set that up as high severity count because um, just thinking about it I haven't um, <laughs> I don't have any normal alarms in there as far as like low severity so let's go back and add this in here right quick and this is just another good setup right so high severity we'll say high severity acknowledged uh, high severity priority active let's see normal shelf uh, in alarm count in alarm acknowledged uh, in alarm um, let's see in alarm not uh, um, un unacknowledged count let's do that one and then we're going to make the tag again so let's just quickly make the tag come over here plc um, go to our controller tags make this tag paste it in there a dense perfectly fine it's just a count um, then we're going to come in here to our hmi of course it can't it can't make that right now let's come over here pick our tag refresh the data d database again pick our tag and this is going to be an alarm unacknowledged all right so come over here pick this and we're going to pick our put our quotations in there shortcut and we're going to do our wild card and then come over here put that just like that and have that accepted again if you did not have that accepted it's not going to work so we'll close this out save this um, and as it saves again start and stop these because that's just when you're in the in the process of making them you want to start and stop them after they're already started um, you know normally you're never gonna have to troubleshoot this stuff but if you are troubleshooting it or setting it up that's what you're going to be doing um, so let's change this to in uh, so the count right here and you can see the end the it, it automatically populated as soon as I started it up you see it automatically populated to five so let's go in here to uh, the uh, FOF routine and let's change this to to this tag and let's change this to this tag and let's change edit this one edit this name to previous just like this just like this just like this okay so this should be um, actually actually did add too many T's so let's take out the T uh, just like that all good now as soon as we accept that it, it's going to load it into the previous because it is not acknowledged okay so now we'll come in here let's acknowledge these again well, let's actually reset the alarms let's acknowledge them okay that's reset them fully reset all right, so now we can come back into our PLC program and everything is zero. Now that's because it's not equal to. Now we can put something in here that just says it's like, uh, uh, let's just say a, a one shot. Um, but again, when it comes down to it, uh, we wanna track and, and have this data there. 
So if we wanted to actually stop this data from happening, we can just load it in there um, and then have it stay, right? So previous, we can load it in previous and, and have it stay. Um, you know, just block it somehow or whatever the case may be. If we can say not in, not in critical alarm, then don't worry about it. You know, so we could say something like that. We could say, okay, well, how many critical alarms do we have? In this case, um, we can come down here and grab our bit and just say, this will only happen if the critical alarm is active. Um, and then drag this down here, just like that. And that will only trigger if the critical alarm is there. Now, again, in our system, we only have a couple critical alarms. So that's, it's kind of defeating the purpose of, you know, um, having too much of this in here. I'm just kind of showing you how stuff could be possibly set up and just showing you how different things are set up in, with der derived tags, right? So let's go into here. Let's trigger a couple more alarms. A couple um, over here, just to show you a couple of different ones. Let's go over here, do this one, two, three, let's do four this time. Verify that all four alarms did come in. They are all there, they're populated. Okay, so this gives you a nice, easy uh, look and feel of the data. This shows you four alarms, critical alarms that are there. All four did load in there. Now let's reset. If we global reset and we acknowledge, then we come back to our PLC code. It still has four previous alarms. So the way this, this works is you can say, okay, now I have a controlled stop where I can put this bit anywhere to stop my whole system, right? To stop my machine, to safely stop my machine. And then also too, if I want to come back and say, let's just say um, I've left for the night, I've been troubleshooting something, whatever, I think I got it fixed, I can reset this count. And if I come back in the morning and there has been previous data, I can track that. Or if I just went on to see the lifetime of my activity, how many alarms, how many critical alarms have they been having or whatever the case may be. Um, this is a good solid way to just implement it. And it's another solid way to understand how derived tags work. Again, derived tags are something very powerful that you can use um, if you use them the correct way. So again, the most thing, the heart, the thing that you need to understand the most, right, is the expression is what's going to control the tag. Uh, it's going to actually be the controlling or the event trigger that sends the data over to the derived tag that or the tag that's going to the PLC, which is going to be your derived tag, right? it's actually getting its data derived from the expression, right? Perfectly, makes perfect sense as soon as you understand the way the flow of the data works. Now you can use any tags in here you want. You don't have to use alarms and events. I'm just using alarms and events for the simple fact of it's a very easy and easy understandable scenario because you can have many, many different PLCs in a machine, a large scale system, have all that large scale system talk back to your alarms and events and then understand what is the implement of having all that stuff and what's important to have critical alarms, non-critical alarms. Some things are low priority, some things are high priority, and it depends on severities and the way you have your ALMDs set up, right? And again, how we have our ALMDs set up is, and that's just going on severities, that's when it goes down to it. Some things you don't want to put as a high severity on your ALMD. It could be a low severity, like it's something you can live with, but it is an alarm you need to look at, right, in your machine. So just think about that, and uh, hopefully that was very helpful, and we'll see you guys on the next one.